So an aneurysm is, in simplest terms, is a bubble on an artery. So uh, if you have an artery with blood flowing through it, the aneurysm is just a bubble that comes out of the side of it. So the blood flows through the main artery and then it swirls around inside the bubble. Uh, it's usually it involves arteries at the base of the, of the brain and technically they're not in the brain, they're on the undersurface of the brain. It's sitting in your head for years, you don't know it's there, and on any given day, it can burst. Now, if it bursts outright like that, those patients do not survive it. On the other hand, if the aneurysm leaks blood out and then seals itself off because the bleeding stops, they have a chance to survive it. As far as the cause of an aneurysm, it, there is a predisposition if you have a weakness in the wall of the artery, and then it causes that area to balloon out. Aneurysms are more common in women, about 70% occur in women and 30% in men, and nobody knows why that is. They are more common in people with high blood pressure, and they are more common in smokers. So let's say you know you have an aneurysm in your head, what's the chances that it's going to burst? And the best answer that we have to that question is approximately 1% per year. So that means if there were 100 people and they all had an aneurysm in their head, and we knew they had an aneurysm in their head, and I said, go home, do whatever you want to do, and come back next year. 99 out of 100 will come back just fine. But one out of the 100, sometime during that year, their aneurysm will leak or burst, and that person then has a 50-50 chance to survive it. So in a year's time, the odds are very much in your favor. 99 out of 100, you're going to be fine. But if you're 50 years old and you plan to live another 30 or 35 years, that 1% per year is going to add up over your lifetime. So even though the short-term risk is small, your lifetime risk becomes significant. On the other hand, if you're 80 years old and you have an aneurysm in your head, most likely you're going to just take your chances because your lifetime risk of a hemorrhage is going to be relatively small. And of course there's risk to treating the aneurysm too, so you have to balance well, what's my lifetime risk of a hemorrhage versus what's the risk of the treatment. We're frequently asked, well, should we do screening tests to look for aneurysms? And those are not routinely done. However, uh, if you have had others in your family that have had aneurysms and you are female, you with high blood pressure and you smoke, then it makes sense to do some screening tests to look for it. You could have an aneurysm in your head for years and you would never know it's in there. Usually you don't get any symptoms until you get that catastrophic hemorrhage. And when that happens, then the symptoms are very clear and the patients describe a sudden onset of the worst headache of their entire life. And these patients know something is seriously wrong. Many people have headaches. And the question is, well, how do I know it's not an aneurysm? So the important thing is to know that the headache you get from a ruptured aneurysm is different than the headache of a migraine or a tension headache or other types of headaches. And the key factor is how the headache started. So the patients with a ruptured aneurysm can tell you the very split second that it started. So they will say, I was perfectly fine. I got up this morning, I walked in the bathroom, and I started to brush my teeth, and boom! It was like an explosion in my head. One is with surgery, which requires an incision on the side of the head, we raise a flap of skin, take out a window of bone, and we dissect with a microscope underneath the brain down to the aneurysm, find the bubble, so to speak, define the neck of the bubble, 
and then place a metal clip literally across the base or the neck of the aneurysm and pinch it off like that. So the blood still goes through the main artery, but it can't get inside the bubble anymore, and the aneurysm is cured. So that's the technique for clipping an aneurysm. The alternative is a technique called coiling of the aneurysm, and that's similar to the way they put stents in the heart. So they go in through the groin with a catheter, and they go up through the carotid artery all the way up to your head, and they snake their catheter literally inside the aneurysm. And then from the groin, they thread a long wire that's made out of platinum, and that wire runs up through the catheter, and when it comes out of the end of it, it has memory in it, and it coils into a ball. And it essentially fills the aneurysm in from the inside. So now, when the blood flows past, it can't swirl in the aneurysm anymore because the coil causes the whole thing to clot off. In the patients who do have this sudden explosive headache, it is very rare that they will tough it out at home. It is so intense and so severe, they know something is des desperately wrong, and they virtually always come to the emergency room right then.